Good afternoon, dear students. Today we are going to start with the second unit that is fermentation and fermenter equipments. So the first topic is types of fermentation. Now before we study different types of fermentations, let us understand what a fermentation is. Okay, the general concept of about fermentation. In olden days, when sugar and starchy materials were used for producing alcoholic beverages. And the bubbling was observed during this process. That bubbling was called as fermentation in olden days. Okay. Later on, for the term fermentation was applied to any process wherein alcohol was formed from sugar. Irrespective of whether the process was a biological process or a non-biological process. Okay. So, then pasture. Louis Pasteur described fermentation as life without air. According to him, the term fermentation applied to all those processes in which microorganisms obtained energy for growth in the absence of oxygen. Okay. So, what Pasteur said, fermentation is life without air and according to him, fermentation uh, is the term applied to all the processes where microorganisms are used to carry out the production and microorganisms obtain their energy for growth in the absence of oxygen. That means the process is anaerobic. Okay. But fermentation today has a much broader meaning. It refers to both aerobic as well as anaerobic metabolic activities of microorganisms wherein specific chemical changes are brought about in an organic substrate. Okay. So, what is fermentation today? In a broader sense, it is both aerobic as well as anaerobic uh, and metabolic activity of organism where a specific, uh, specific chemical change is brought about and uh, a product is generated. Rather, from industrial point of view, fermentation includes any process which involves microorganisms and the product obtained has an economic value. Okay. So, fermentation is any process of producing a commercially and economically valuable product utilizing microorganisms. Now, uh, like uh, if, if you want to talk about respiration, respiration is supposed to be an ATG, ATP generating pathway in which organic uh, substrates act as electron donors and inorganic substances act as electron acceptors. In aerobic respiration, the ultimate electron acceptor is oxygen and in anaerobic uh, respiration, the ultimate electron acceptor is an inorganic compound other than oxygen. That means it may be a nitrate or a phosphate like that. Now, what is a fermentation? Fermentation is defined as an ATP generating process in which degradation product of organic substrate serve as electron donors as well as electron acceptors. Okay, so it is an ATP generating process in which degradation product of organic substrates serve as electron donors as well as electron acceptors. The compounds that perform these two functions means what function of electron donor as well as, ex, uh, as acceptor are two different metabolites derived from a single substrate like sugar. Okay. So, the compounds which behave as electron donors or electron acceptors are two different metabolites derived from a single substrate like a sugar. The substrate produces mixture of end products some of which are reduced some are oxidized and the average oxidation level of the end product remains identical to that of the substrate thus a fermentation is a balance meaning that the substrate and the products have same oxidation level okay now let us talk about different types of fermentation see Fermentations are classified depending upon oxygen requirement. Fermentations are classified depending upon whether organisms grow on surface or organisms grow throughout the production medium. Okay. Also, 
Fermentations are classified depending upon oxygen requirement, depending upon where do microorganisms grow, whether they grow on the surface or whether it is submerged. Okay. So, whether the fermentation is a type of submerged fermentation or organism grows on the surface. So, let us discuss about fermentation types. Fermentations are classified into different types depending upon various criteria. The first criteria is oxygen requirement. So, on the basis of oxygen requirement, fermentations are classified as aerobic fermentation and anaerobic fermentation. What is an aerobic fermentation? Okay. Most of the industrial processes, though they are called as fermentations, are aerobic in nature because they are carried out by aerobic microorganisms. Okay. So, what is an aerobic? Uh, what is uh, aerobic fermentation? Aerobic fermentations are those which are carried out by aerobic microorganisms and oxygen is required for the whole fermentation process. Okay. In modern days, aerobic fermentation processes are carried out in a fermenter which is provided with an aeration device and also a mixing device. Okay. So, a fermentation, aerobic fermentation is carried out in a fermentation vessel which we call as fermenter. The fermenter is provided with an aerator. It is an aerating device. The fermenter is also provided with an agitator, okay, agitator is a mixing device having impeller blades, okay, with which the medium is continuously mixed. So, from the aeration device, sterile air is pumped inside and with the help of the agitator, the air is mixed throughout the fermentation medium, okay. Thus, aerobic conditions are generated in the closed fermentation vessel with Submerged culture. Submerged means organism is distributed throughout the production medium. Okay. So, aerobic conditions can be generated even in a closed vessel by using an aerating device and a mixing device. Say for example, acetic acid that is vinegar production and penicillin production are aerobic fermentations because they are carried out by aerobic microorganisms. Now, let us discuss about anaerobic fermentations. Anaerobic fermentations are those which are carried out in the absence of oxygen by facultatively anaerobic bacteria or by strictly anaerobic microorganisms okay so anaerobic fermentations are those which are carried out by anaerobic microorganism strict anaerobes or facultatively anaerobic bacteria in the absence of oxygen okay the fermenter is designed to operate okay the fermentation vessel the fermenter is designed to operate under anaerobic or micro aerophilic condition. Now, if we want to discuss about the design of the vessel, it is same as that of the aerobic fermenter. The only, uh, you can say, change in design is that there is no aeration device and there is no agitation device. Okay. So, the fermenter is designed to operate under anaerobic or uh, micro aerophilic condition is the same as that designed to operate under aerobic condition except that aeration device and agitation devices are not required. However, what happens that in uh, many anaerobic fermentations, especially those anaerobic fermentations where we use facultative anaerobes like yeast. So, in that case, mild aeration is required for inoculum development. Matlab, for the growth of the organisms, meaning that to increase the cell number, to develop the inoculum, for the to develop of a growth of uh, microorganisms cultured inside the medium, mild aeration and mixing is required. Mixing or agitation is also required to maintain the temperature. Okay. So, though the fermentation is anaerobic, if it is carried out by facultatively anaerobic bacteria, then initially mixing may be required, okay? And mild aeration may also be required for sufficient or you can say optimum growth of microorganisms to increase the cell number, right? So, for example, acetone-butanol fermentation, 
alcoholic fermentations are anaerobic fermentations okay now on the basis of growth pattern fermentations are classified as surface culture production and submerged culture production okay on the basis of growth pattern fermentations are classified as surface culture production and submerged culture production now let us discuss about surface culture production in this type of fermentation growth of microorganism is observed only on the surface of the fermentation medium okay microorganisms grow only on the surface of the medium they do not grow throughout the medium okay they are only observed on the surface so we either use a semi solid medium or a sterile solid or liquid medium and the culture is inoculated only across the surface of the production medium okay we do not uh, put the culture or inoculum inside and mix the whole medium we don't mix only the culture is uh, you can say inoculated on the surface of the production medium which may be solid or liquid the culture remains only on the surface of the medium throughout the fermentation process the organism grows and multiplies grows and multiplies new cells are formed but the new cells remain only on the top layer of the fermentation medium okay so the culture remains only on the surface there is no mixing there is no air agitation and all okay because it is a stationary or a static fermentation okay because it is a stationary or static fermentation we don't mix the or uh, the culture remains only on the surface throughout the medium without any mixing or agitation in stationary fermentations organisms remain localized only on the surface and hence the product yield is less because nutrients or substrate from the top layer is used rest of the medium is unutilized or rest of the substrate is not converted into product so the substrate that is present only on the top layer is utilized by the microorganisms to produce the product and hence the yield is always less in case of surface culture production because it is a stationary fermentation organisms are present only on the surface so organisms use only the substrate present or raw material present on the surface and products are obtained but the yield is very low because complete medium is not utilized so here in this process um, uh, the organisms are mainly sporulating organisms spore forming organisms okay the dry spores of the organisms are inoculated across the surface of the medium and that results in only the surface growth of organism okay here the organisms that are mainly used for surface culture production are sporulating microorganisms spores are spread or inoculated across only on the surface of the medium and hence the growth of the organism also occurs on the surface of the medium the another type depending upon growth pattern is submerged culture production submerged means uh, deep uh, deep uh, growing inside submerged means growing inside the liquid medium okay here in this type of fermentation growth of organism is present throughout the liquid fermentation medium okay in submerged culture productions the medium the production medium is liquid and growth of microorganism occurs or takes place throughout the bulk of the medium okay the fermentation is carried out in a vessel which which is actually a sterilizable tank which is equipped with a mechanical agitator and a sparger for aeration sparger is the aeration device okay so in submerged culture production organism grows throughout the bulk of the production medium and in order to mix the media contents and to provide air aeration and agitation devices are provided with the fermentation tank and the tank is to be sterilized before starting the fermentation proper and uniform mixing of medium and microorganisms result in better product yield as compared to surface culture production okay so the growth yield or the product yield that is obtained by submerged culture production is very high as compared to 
సర్ఫేస్ కల్చర్ ప్రొడక్షన్ నో సబ్మర్స్డ్ కల్చర్ ప్రొడక్షన్స్ ఆర్ ఫర్దర్ క్లాసిఫైడ్ డిపెండింగ్ అపాన్ విత్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద మత వాట్ ఈస్ ద గ్రోత్ ఫేజ్ ఆఫ్ ది ఆర్గానిజం ఓకే సో డిపెండింగ్ అపాన్ ద గ్రోత్ ఫేజ్ ఆఫ్ ది ఆర్గానిజం వి ఫర్దర్ క్లాసిఫై సబ్మర్స్డ్ కల్చర్ ప్రొడక్షన్ యాజ్ బ్యాచ్ కల్చర్ బ్యాచ్ ఫర్మెంటేషన్ అండ్ కంటిన్యూస్ ఫర్మెంటేషన్ ఓకే or depending upon whether product is produced continuously or not we classify submerged culture productions as um, batch fermentation and continuous fermentation now in tomorrow's lecture in next next lecture we will discuss about batch ferment uh, fermentation and continuous fermentation